um, today we're gonna see uh, chapter eight, which is data import, and is basically um, a new chapter in this book. And um, before in the first edition, I think um, this chapter wasn't there and this uh, has been added. So unfortunately the um, book, you know, um, summary um, does not have the, this chapter and they use a data set called student.csv. And um, I tried to find the data set, I didn't find it. Uh, but now I found it after going through the book, um, original book, um, and uh, yeah, I saw the chapter. So um, unfortunately, I haven't prepared it without that. So let's look at what they have. So the, basically, the objective of this chapter is to, you know, allow us to see how we can read using um, read R function, which is read underscore uh, CSV. Uh, or TSV, the general format for the function is this read. And if you have a CSV file, you'll be able to have CSV. If you have TSV, as we see in a bit, and several other function of the family. Um, also, we'll compare this function with this R equivalent, which is read.csv. So the function for from uh, tidyverse family is read underscore csv but from base r is read dot csv which they have read dot csv yep so which they have um, you know um, different performance um also we'll be able to see how we can pass data into uh uh using pass underscore this um i think this just introduce um pass uh um, integer, I think, but there are a huge family of these um, functions that pass from character to, uh, I mean, from different kind of data type to another thing. Um, finally, we'll all be able to see, you know, read, write, uh, which basically allow us to, uh, you know, write after reading. So, yeah, so that's um, what we'll be seeing today. Um, I think on the book, I saw like a tweet, they added another chapter today, uh, which is Arrow, which is why I was telling you that this is book is act in active development. Uh, I saw the chapter, yes. So they added ch this chapter today or yesterday, which is basically also in some ways, um, we can see this is data import, but the main you know, chapter on data import uh, from database, from spreadsheet, which will be dealt in detail, is in this section import, which they have um, added as, as I'm saying, arrow um, yesterday. That's why after adding arrow yesterday, they also update this um, data import um, where it have now um, a little bit of introduction to arrow uh, down the end. Yep, they have a little bit. So they, uh, they are actively in development of the book. So that's why I don't have the, you know, because the update the chapter history, I didn't update uh, what I have. So um, I would just go back and, you know, we can go through through this chapter from the book. So um, the main thing we would be able to be using is this data, C this CSV file, which basically a student record. So we can see um, we have this read underscore CSV, um, but we can also, what about if we do that, is it read underscore CSV? Yep. So we can see, um, like, you know, it gave us um, the same, you know, uh, stuff, but uh, there are huge uh, performance difference. I will see. Um, yep. Okay. So we can see here now we use um, read underscore CSV to read a CSV file. And this file, we can see it has a columns. The first one, student ID, full name, favorite, mail friend, and this. And one thing we can notice is, you know, um, we have some kind of NA here and also here in A. And we can see here, this is, I think the age, um, maybe this is an age. Um, yep, this is an age, but it passed the age to character because this is everything is character. What is happening behind the scene, um, read CSV, read underscore CSV, try to guess the data type of 
the columns, you are not providing the data types yourself. It just the read underscore CSV function and that using some kind of heuristic, you know, um, stuff. Uh, if it sees, for example, if it try to, um, if it's reading this column and try to find out, okay, the first one is string. This is string. This is string. This is string. it. Will just you know um, uh, infer that this is a character column. So here the infer that it is you know um, age and which will give us a problem when we try to do some stuff. So the best way is when you read in file is to uh, in ways to also provide you know specify uh, what NA is. So if you already know you have NA, then you can specify that. So you can see here it's using this and here we use the NA for, from R. So here we specify this and give us this. And um, yeah, so because here somebody was writing the age. So instead for him to write five, he write this in this. And also we will see that um, uh, we'll come to uh, how we can um, correct this. But also you can see here, we have um, full name here. We have, you know, um, student ID here. Um, we, you will not be able, if we want to, you know, do an analysis to reference this column. Let me show some stuff here. So um, let me assume I want to, you know, select this column. So I have my student data student. Then, um, and uh, I want to select the column for student ID. So student ID, um, select student ID. Um, like this, we will not be able to do that because there is a space between student and ID, right? So for you to assess any column that has this kind of problem, where there is a space, we need to use, um, you know, uh, something like this. Um, like this. This. Uh, student net fund. Student net fund. Sure. Oh, students. Yes. So you can see you can only use this back tick to be able to assess the column. So here we can also use backtick to assess the column. So in an event where you have um, a columns where uh, you have this kind of issue, you can use this. So that's why here they want to rename these columns and they have these stuff. So here they have this, but also we can use um, another thing called janitor package, um, you know, um, library janitor. Um, which um, will be able to, you know, clean names. So we can call this one here. We can, you know, have this and we can call this clean names functions. Um, when we run this, clean names will, you know, uh, make every column's name because we can see here from the beginning, the, the student ID that is a space, full name that is space, and February, there is dot meal plan okay i think this is not an issue but normally sometimes um you know in clean names we use underscore to separate the you know terms so here when we use just janitor we can see oh the meal plan also it changes from you know underscore from the uh because it's two word so janitors you know use this stuff to um, separate the two so we can see here we have full name we have primary we have this so this is how um you know uh, the problem of reading uh, files, a CSV file, number one is like, if you have um, spaces in the name, you'll have these, you will also, um, you know, uh, account, encounter a name, uh, a, pro, uh, uh, a situation whereby the read CSV does not actually infer the types of that column correctly. Okay, anyone wants to add something? Yeah, I think I, I in the book it, it it mentioned somewhere when when it introduces this janitor it mentioned like uh, it will just change them to like the, the snake case. Yes, yeah, snake case. Yeah. yeah, something like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I think last week you discussed um. Yeah, um, yeah you, you were mentioning something like the snake case and the camel case, but uh, yes. yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So this janitor um changes this to um snake case. Um, a snake case. Oh, yeah, they mentioned it's snake case here as well. Yeah. Right. So this is snake case whereby we have everything in small letter and separated by this underscore. This is, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So you can see um, Cranium use some heuristics to turn them all into Snake. Um, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, any one with any other thing? Ahmad, anything? No, no. Okay, so, um, you know, um, that is this about that. Um, okay, so we can also use this, um, you know, um, um, so, uh, I, I, so looking at this as well, um, you know, we can change the data type of this. So we can go through this. So if we look at this one, um, here we use the janitor to clean the names. And here we can see we use mutate. So um, um, I've, um, Abdul, like yesterday, last week, um, I mean, the last session, so yeah. like we did, we made mention like uh, it's not a good uh, way to, for example, to put all this if you have this in a single line. So for example, if I, I want to have this, um, as we, we explained, it's not good. So it's better for us to, you know, uh, you remember what you said? Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> the convention, better. you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what- Well, we can just use the styler and- Yeah, we can do use first. that. So for example, oh no. Um, you know, so for example, if I have this, you know, this, I can use Styler, so I can highlight this guy. I can call Styler. So I don't know if I can call Styler here. Um, I said um, style selections. So yeah, style, yeah. Then it does it for you. Yeah. So Styler can change this for us. So now yeah. here we have a function called pass. So this pass number we have different kind of, you know, uh. Um, we have. Uh, oh, I didn't know how to see, see this. Mm. Um, half. I want to see this. No, how, how can I see the help? Uh, function this. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Transfer a string to a number or. Uh no, I want to see the function. Um, the help in the. You know, so yeah, so this function called pass, um, we have different kind of uh, pass functions. Um, what is doing basically it will, you know, change anything if it is string to number. So for example, now what we have here, if age is five, you know, turn it to five or to age. So let me show us this one here. So let's run this guy, you know, what do I have? Hmm. Okay, let me see. Is it correct? You deleted them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, no, this is not correct. What happened? Ah, I see. And um, this way, this is not working. So here we have janitor, weekly names, motor meal plan. We want to change this to a uh, factor and age. If age is equals to five, change it to five, um, else return the age, right? So we have everything returns, then we pass to the number. So mm. I think there is a, an additional uh, bracket at the end of, uh, beside age. Oh, okay, beside age. Oh yeah. No, delete delete the, the, the last two. Yeah, try this. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay. So it's it's not that. <laughs> okay, let me see <laughs> this again. So this is what we have, I think, right? So oh. Uh, okay, this one. So let me see this. Um, I think there's a problem with the if function. If else. Called by error in if else. Okay, let me see. If else. H equals to five. But it's true, right? 
I, I don't see what's happening here. Hmm. Okay. Are, uh, are there is a, there is a, a column called age with a, with a small? Yes. Okay, let me. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm asking GP, Chat GPT is telling me that it's missing pipe operator. Oh, no, no, no. No, but this is. There's this. Okay. Age. Um, Ahmad, you can see the age? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the, the, the changes has already been made. Huh? The, the changes have already been made. The five has already been converted to uh, a figure. Yeah. Oh, but what? I think it's it already run, so it's, it doesn't. Ah, it okay. already run. I don't know why it's bringing yeah. the error, but yeah. it has already run. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so the five is deleted. Yeah, and I don't. List with five. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it, it has already run. So, okay. So let me see something here. Um, okay. So I ask this guy. Let me see what this. Oh. So I was asking Chat GPT. He's telling me that he knows this. Um, because he knows this, he doesn't know maybe this one. And uh, anyway, okay. So I don't know what's going on here. Um. Okay. So that's um. You know. Um, changing it this to this. So um, we have different other arguments with um, read CSV. So what is happening is sometimes we may want to basically, you know, skip some, you know, arguments in your file. So I usually, I, a lot of times I do this. So if I have this, um, you know, um, I have, you can see, I have, you know, one line, second line, then we can use an argument called skip two it means it will skip this guy and this guy but also you can skip you know comments so here we can see we have this comment um if we have this um it will skip the comment so when you're reading a csv so when we look at this um here read csv um let me show us here there are a lot of so this is read csv file uh, function so um uh, so yeah so we can see there are many arguments here. For example, delaying code, escape back, you know, escape column names, um, column types. Sometimes when you read a CSV, it does not contain um column names. So we can set column names is also false. Um, sometimes when you want to read a CSV file, you don't want it to read all the columns because maybe you have 60 columns, you can specify the columns you want to select while reading. So this is it. Um, here is local, so sometimes we have different kind of, you know, uh, type of files in different countries, local, so here I think will be discussed more detail in that chapter, you can specify that, um, this is what we uh, have seen, any, if you know, you may expect you have any, you can specify this, um, I'm not sure what is quoted any, um, does anybody know quoted any, maybe if the any is quoted, I think, yeah, maybe, and here is comment, as we see here, trim, um, this, uh, I don't know what's this trim. Um, skip, um, skip uh, here as well. Okay, that's read for TSV. This is for read for CSV, which is basically the same. And progress. So for example, what this means is progress is this. So if we have, you know, um, if we wanna show a uh, progress while reading our file here, we can see progress equals true. Um, like this, so, oh, it's not that much. So it's not showing the progress, I think. So uh, show progress, it will show progress if your reading file is large, show column times, um, skip empty rows. So if you have empty row, this will skip. Um, so you can see like, you know, it's a lot of parameters that ones can be able to use, um, but we also have read CSV too, which we will see in a bit. Yeah, anyone wants to ask something regarding these uh, terms? Oh, we have what we call name repair. So name repair, basically, um, if you have two names in your column, for example, if I have meal plan, okay. Um, and I have another column called meal plan. 
the name repair will try to make all these two names unique. Maybe it will add them something like that. So this is name repair before you read the file, read CSV. Yep. Okay. So that's um, what they discuss here. Um, so that's what I've saying, column names. If you don't have a column name, so it will automatically, you can see this is an example of CSV without column names. So we say column names is false, then it will not, you know, um, it will just put this X1, X2. Um, you can also assign column names as well. So these are some of the other types of read, um, uh, uh, read, read family. Um, read CSV2 um, is used to read files that are not comma separated by this, they are used by this. Um, we can see here these uh, files which are comma separated like this. Um, you can see comma separated like this, comma separated. Um, so if one file is not comma separated, we read TSV. Um, it's used to read tab delimited files. So tab delimited files is, um, I don't know, like um, uh, anyone uses, um, I, have you used TSV file before? Uh, yeah, but, but yeah. I was just trying it. It's, it's, I think it's, uh, it's tab separated. Uh, right. Yeah. It's yeah. Separated, separated by the step. Yeah. Oh, yes. Tab separated. TSV is tab separated. Um, I use it a lot. Um, I think a lot in Python people use um this tab separated, but um, uh, you know, for data stuff like CSVs. Yeah. We have read delim delim. Um, yeah. We have uh, uh, FW table read common variation of table with this column. A read log, uh, which is basically a read Apache style log file. So we'll be able to see this as well. Oh, they add, they add this one along again. Okay, I didn't know they add this one too. Hmm. Okay. Um, so here, this is controlling column name times, uh, types. So here they discuss about, you know, uh, that reading a files um, is basically um, JSON, which we'll be able to see uh, the details when we come to this chapter info, uh, but this is basically what is happening. Um, if you read a file and um, it try to guess the column type, for example, does it contain only F, O, T, O, Z? If it contain only these values, it will guess it is logical. That is, um, you know, um, yeah, logical. Um, it it contain only numbers, it will guess it is number, right? But if in this case where it does not contain a number, it contains this, so it try it will not guess this is a number. It's, it will just say a character because when you have you know combination of um, you know numbers and character, it will guess it's a character, not a number. So that's what is happening. Um, yeah. So this is basically um, what they discuss here. Um, yeah. So this is basically the same. Okay. So um, column times. Um, so here, read R flow bytes a total of nine column types. So there are nine column types read R flow bytes, um, column logical, column double, um, you know, uh, column integer, character, factor. So factor is, you know, column date and uh, date time, they are refers to a factor. Um, number is normal number, we know. So these are some of the, you know, um, uh, different kind of uh, column tab we will see when we read, uh, you know, uh, any file. But there is something here uh, we can see an example here that they give us. So what this example is saying is, um, let's assume we have this, and um, you know, this is our CSV, and um, we want to read it. So, yeah, so when we look at this, um, you know, you can basically um, overwrite, you know, the default column by switching from list to columns. So here we can see here, we said column types and we say calls, um, then default override column character. So here you can it override everything to character because we can see here is basically, um, you know, integer. Um, so when reading a file, you can overwrite. If you know the existing um, type of the column is CSV. So for here, we already, if we have this, if I have this guy here, read CSV and uh, I don't have this. This. So we can see this is double, right? This is double, this is double. 
But before reading, you know that you have double ties, but you want to override the double ties to character. So this is where this function, this um, you know, capability comes into. So using these, you know, call types, uh, where we see um, read CS call types. Yeah, you can see here call types. So these call types um, is used to override the um, type of the columns. So here we say calls override the default to con character. So that's here we can see it override to character here, something like this. Yeah, anyone wants to add something? Um, I just want to know how how could we convert um like convert from type to type after we read we we have read the CSV. Yeah, um, you say what, uh, Ahmed? After we we have read the CSV. Yes. Uh, we I want to convert some column to from one type to another. How? Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um we can see here um what we have this is CSV. And we can see here we have double, double, double. And when we when we use this, I think um, you know, it combat everything to character. So Amari say, like, how can we like um, you know, specify some specific columns um to be combated to, you know, um maybe a single data, not everything. Um, I'm not sure maybe whether we can use this column selects. Um uh, okay, that's not the one. Um yeah, uh, let me see this. Yeah, so this is the one. I think uh, maybe columns only. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's the same. It's the yeah. same. We use we use the same uh, function read the CSV. Um, my my question is how how we do it after we we read the CSV files, uh -huh. like in the separate statement, how to convert uh, like a column type from from not from like number to character for example ah, okay okay for example here i read it i read you yeah see, and you want yeah. to change this to oh okay so let me do something like this um uh um mutate um is so let me see um it Oh, I cannot see the value here. Um, um, is it what you mean, like to change a single column after reading? Yes, it? yes, that's exactly. Um, but here <laughs> I cannot yeah. see the one, the one here. Can we use call call underscore character also here? Is it a call function what? that call this underscore one? character? Yeah, this one. Or is, uh, is it specified one, only on this uh, function? On is, read CSV? Is, yes, it's read CSV function. Um, so to change a um, you know uh, column type, um, yeah. So so so. Um, Abdul, do you know any? Uh, no, no, not really, not really. Okay, um, I'm do. Okay, so I think, um, hmm. yeah, yeah, I think the, the same thing as I did, um, you know, so here, for example, um, you can use this. Okay, it's still double. Um, so for example, if I already have, you know, um, uh, something different, um, um, you can use as double if you have. So example here, uh, let me see this, uh, three. Okay. No. Because it's in double quote. Can ah, yeah, okay. The, yeah. Okay, so when I read this, um, I don't know why this guy is telling me still. Oh, bah, 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 bah. anyway, yeah, still the same. So, um, anyway, um, uh, what I know previously, like, yeah, I know you can use this, you know, 
what I already showed, um, you know, you can use as character, um, character. So here is something that I also, um, you know, asks this, this guy. Uh, oh, oh. Yes, I'm, uh, I was thinking, you know, the column type arguments, we could uh, use those ones to change. Which one? Like the, the, the column type. Okay. Like so the, there are two options. Um, yeah, I can see. Uh, you can also use this type. You, this, you know, if you have a data frame, um, you can also use this using. So um, here are two options. Um, we can, um, we obviously know this. Um, if we have a column, for example, um, you know, you can change this to numeric if the column is different, something like this. But also we can use this, what I've already shown. So this is something that I quickly Google in, um, you know, but that's the something I just said. Uh, but what are you saying, Abdul? Yeah, I was, I, I was uh, thinking the Ahmad's question. Maybe the column type might, might, might help. This one? Okay, okay, let's try it. Yeah, and instead of set, you know, the default is null. Instead of uh, using that, we could uh, specify this this column that we want to change and and okay. and, and and give it the type we want to change it to instead of a character. Okay, yeah, instead of the column class. Um, 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 so um, if you can come, um, Ahmed, um, we have CSV and column times here. Um, what do you um thinking to override um so that it can? Do we say here X? Do, is it something like that? Um, no, I, I, I'm, my, my question was that after I don't yeah, want yeah. to use, use the read CSV because yeah. most of the time we, we don't know the types. Exactly. Example. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I mean, okay, this is basically the way to do it. Um, as I said, uh, let's Google, uh, change column type, uh, R. you know, this is basically how one can do it. Uh, yeah, this yeah. is as about. dot as dot character yeah. or as dot numeric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is um, they are not using the tidyverse. So if anybody comes to R that doesn't know like tidyverse, he will be a bit confused as seeing this and you know and when he sees the tidyverse style. So let's look at the tidyverse style, uh, which may look I, I believe. So what I do basically, if I want to ask question, um, change column uh, then I will type tidyverse, tidyverse for example. Um, oh. So when I type tidyverse, hopefully the question, the answer that it will return is in tidyverse style. So you can see this is this um, mutate add, you know, sees as integer. This is as excellent, you know. Um, so this is telling us mutate at, you know, change the column at six to integer. Can you see that? The six, uh, the six column. Six yeah, column. Six. Yes, yes. Yeah. Six column. Six column. Oh. Oh. Yes. Six column. Um. Yep. Update deep like this. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah also, so, so we have this as well across. So meaning that um, change, you know, anything that is integer, um, any, anything to integer. Uh, no, 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 this. Anyway, yep, yep, yep. Um, I want to um, introduce something like across, which allows you to select, you know, um, columns that are only integer um, that are a particular type to divide them into something. But anyway, you can look at this, um, you know, that's, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very useful. Yeah. What I was saying is um, when you want to Google, um, I, don't, I just don't Google like this, I just put tidy bus. And that helps me to um, make sure that the result that returns is, uh, you, know, um, you know, in, in the player, which I, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It, the columns I want. So, yeah. So yeah, look at another one. So mutate, we have a data set called iris, mutate across, then you specify this, can you see them? Across, then you specify the sepal width and sepal column, that is all these two, Yeah, combine. change them to factor. Yeah. Change them yeah. to factors. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, this is, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so if we have this, um, if we, we already know iris, so here, if we have iris, so we can see iris is double. These are all doubles, right? All doubles, double, double. It's only species that is character, factor. So now if we want to combine, um, change this guy and this guy, so you can do like this, you know, mutate across, 
Then you specify the columns you want, change to particular thing, then to factor. So when we run this guy, so you can see it changed them to factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So I think this answer questions your question. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. And this is, you could also uh, have like multiple columns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's, um, you know, um, on. Yeah. What about this? Um, another useful helper is calls only, which would read only the columns you see is fine. So, oh. yeah. So, um, um, you know, as Hamad says, this time you don't know which columns you want, um, but if you already know, you can select only one column to, uh, you know, select and, you know, change it and put this one. Yeah. So this is something that I really, <laughs> um, you know, I really struggle, um, but they add this in this chapter uh, recently. So reading multiple files. So reading multiple files. So um, you can see here, for example, you have a file like this, you have this, you have this, and you want to read them and put them together in a single file. That is, you want to concatenate them. So previously, I actually am using a kind of nifty ways to do that. But um, I was reading um, this chapter. I said, oh, this is very efficient, just a simple way. So you just create, uh, put all the files. If you know the files, they are not that much. Like, for example, you have three files. One, two, three. You just create a vector. Now, when you create a vector, now you can just, um, you know, read CSV, cells file. And you need to have ID file. So this ID is not necessary, I guess, but this file ID. So if you look at this um, read CSV, can you see we have ID? Yeah, this the uh, tab ID. So this ID will because we want to concatenate all the data. For example, this one contain twenty files. This twenty files. This twenty five. So I want to do this. Um, if I run this, so look at it. It put them all together. Then the file ID, the um, you know, the ID will be the file. So you can see here, um, you know, the name of the file. Um, the first one here. And if we go to the next one, you know, 002, the name of this file. Um, if we go to the last one, 003, it put this one on ID. So this, this one is really useful while you have many kind of, um, you know, some data types you want to read them. But the main, um, you know, the main, uh, you know, uh, issue with this is like, if you have few files and you know the name of the files. So now what will happen if you don't know the name of the files, like, you know, they are 100. So obviously you cannot write them all here like this and say you want to read them, right? So the solution we have is something like this. Um, you know, we can use list files. So if you have a folder, so we can have list the files. So you specify the, um, you know, where your, you know, um, your folder is. So my folder is called data. And inside my folder data, I have a lot of files. Um, let me show you, um, it's called data. I just put it here today. So you can see I have a lot of files, but inside this folder, I'm not taking all the CSV files, right? I'm taking only CSV file with cells, cells, cells. So you can see one, two, three, you know, cells and not the XLX at the CSV. Now, what we can do is we can use a pattern regex to say, okay, grab any file that contains the word cells and that ends with CSV. So you may be very, you may, if you don't know regex um, in R, um, this is telling us that end here, this one that end with C, dot CSV. I uh, will see the regex, um, you know, which is really interesting. I think I will take this chapter as well. Regular expression um, is really, ex um, you know, interesting. We'll see um, details of that. But for now, um, if we don't know what- Yeah, very useful in your tickets manipulation, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> very useful. Yeah. So if, if you don't know what this means, it's telling us that select any, um, you know, files that start with, that has cells and end with CSV. And, yeah. you know. And so, this two, two slashes is for uh, just to ignore the dot. Yeah, because, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so here we use a list that files um, to create um, something like this. So when we run this guy, you can see this is what we have, right? So we have, um, uh, we have them here inside this. See? So, um, you know. Yeah, yeah. We... Sorry, just a question. Uh, for, for this to work, does the, the dimensions of the files have to be the same or it doesn't matter? 
Um, okay, yeah. So if you, we want to read files like this, um, the files be must. I, I think if what do you mean by dimension? The same column or what? Yeah, yeah, like the same column. Same number like of this. columns and same. Yeah, yeah, I think they must have this. I think they must have the same column. Uh, I mean, if they have different columns, um, I mean, maybe you may see. They will not know. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, could yeah. be. Yeah, they will know it. Yeah. So you can see here, like, um, if you don't know the number of files, you can just use the list files and gives a pattern, which is registered to, you know, select those files. So here is selecting those files here, and you can see here. But here, because we already know there are three files, so it does this, and, you know, we have this. Yeah. Anyone wants to check it on this? Yeah, I, I don't know how similar this is to, like, margin files, right? It's, the concept is different, I don't know. Ah, um, so... I think we are um hmm, interesting. So uh what do you mean by margin file? So let me put something like this. So here I have a data frame, for example, A is equals to this, right? Um I have A. Um when I call uh, run A, I know this. Um I have B, for example, here. This is B. Right. So if I have these two files, um, you know, I can use something like this. C is equals to, you know, uh column, um, you know, bind. Um, bind column, bind row. So I have a function that is a function in R called bind row, meaning uh. it will A and B and put them together. So when I run C, so C is now, you know, everything is now put and in one column, but they put it, you know, on bottom, like, you know. Uh -huh. Append, like append. Yeah, append, append exactly. Yeah. In Python, yeah. append. Yes, in Python, append. Um, so this is what I know to match, you know, two files, you know, and we have row bind columns. Um, this is bind row. We have bind column. If you yeah. are binding columns, but now we are doing bind row, you can put it together. Um, I don't know which one you are referring to, like to match files. Um, what what do you mean by match files? Yeah, maybe it could be like to like to append, maybe something. Like ah, that. okay. Yeah, yeah, I think this one appends. Um, you know, if you have different data frame, you can append them. But um, yeah. you know. If you have separate files and you want to append them at the end, as um, you know, put them. This is basically one way. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So then, writing to a file, um, you know, this is what we already saw. Um, so writing a file just allow us to, you know, um, use a write underscore CSV, and we need to put the data frame. So here, for example, I have B. I can just put B. Here. And here we name the file. So here I want to name the file student that says me. And this when I run this guy, so it will just be um, you know, inside my, you know, um here, uh current directory. Um, you can see student CSV. But when I want to put it in data, I can do something like this here, right? And now here it will be saved into my data. Um, we can have students that says me something like this. So um, you know, this is just right CSV, which is um a little bit similar to what we have. Yeah, okay. So this is what I was saying, like, you know, um, oh, there is also another, uh, right, RDS, um, the, the, and also read RDS, um, which I don't use it also quite often. Um, so what they are saying is basically, oh, okay. There is one thing we should know here. Um, Um, you know, this write CSV basically uh, has a default file type, which is UTF-8. And um, yeah, so this is something we, um, we, if we have different kind of file format that we want to save, you can specify this an argument. So if we look at this, this CSV here, um, when we come to, um, you know, how, um, when we, Um, when we come here, um, we can see we have right delay, right CSV, X file, and the append column names, code, escape, hmm, progress files. Hmm. Okay, so um, our files, um, you know, uh, both function increase chances out will be read back incorrectly using standard UTF-8. So um, write CSV and read CSV. They are using the standard UTF-8 file system. 
But what they made mention is um, something that I didn't understand here. Like they are saying there is some issue here. So here they said this makes CSV a little unreliable for catching interim results. So um, if you want to save everything um, uh, as your results, you can use another alternative, um, write RDS, and you can read any file that you save with RDS format to read RDS. So um, there are uniform raffles around the base function read RDS. So um, you can see here is read RDS, um, is small letter here, read RDS. This is from base R. This is from base R, this is from tidyverse, and this is from the tidyverse. So, um, you know, and you want to um, um, read it the same way we show, um, you can just write this and you can read something like this. Um, what is shortcut for sorry? RDS? What is shortcut for RDS? Shortcut? Yeah. It's what is what's mean RDS? Ah uh I'm not sure anyway. Uh, let's um uh, um um R RDS format. R data. Uh, sometimes a short uh, and RDS. This format I use when R object are self for later you R data you to say multiple R object while R is used to save a single R object. Uh, I don't know what the mean of RDS. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's in any way. Um, I don't know actually what the RDS means. Mm, okay. So anyway, um, RDS is used to save the R objects. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's used to save, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's used to save R objects. I think in Python we have that, right? Um, Ahmad, is it pickle that save the object? Um, and you yeah, can, pickle. Yeah. Pickle. It's pickle, right? Yeah. So I think um, you know, uh, pickle. This are because pickle um is used to save um you know the. I don't uh, something like that. So I think um I, I I'm not sure like RDA is something similar to pickle in Python. Uh yeah. So finally um you know um the uh there is uh, this, this is what I'm telling you like the add the chapter um yeah. arrow um you know uh um when you have you know uh large data and big data big data big data yeah when you uh -huh. want to deal with big data. Read CSV, write CSV, add the CSV. These are not efficient for you to work on it. In fact, even at the beginning of this book, um, he made mention like you know these um you know some of the thing uh, discussed in this chapter they are not efficient to lead, um you know deal with a large big data. So one thing he started um they started moving adding in this chapter how to deal with big data and arrow is one of them. So um by running library arrow uh you know, we can write this one here and um, save it. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. And we can read. I haven't used this thing. At, at yeah, I, I use it in my job, so it's uh, relevant. Ah, um, okay. It's used in Spark, if you yes, know Spark. Spark. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. So it's, it's just standardized, standardized uh, the way, the formatting for, uh, ah. for saving files. Okay. Uh, and this, this makes no difference if uh, if you because we use the spark in python by spark mm -hmm. by by spark yes 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 so when when this uh, when this when apache apache arrow is uh, uh, invented um the the conversion between uh, the language that is written uh, the spark written in scala so uh, the conversion from scala to python was there is some overhead uh, right there so this is deleted by by just using Apache Arrow, so it's 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 a very um, very good invention to for people that use it by by Spark or uh, or even Spark R uh, in in R. So it's just standardized the way uh, in uh, we how we save files. So okay. yeah, it's very useful. Yeah, and here they made mention like um, Park, um, you know, it's used also not only in R. Um, outside are like in Python, as we know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. But it's also, as they said, it's faster than R for the So you can see if you have big data, so Parquet is, uh, you know, better. And lastly, what they discuss is data entry. So sometimes you want to create like, you know, a simple 
uh, data frame to showcase some example. So one way to use is using table function. So the table function, we can see here, we say, okay, create a table. We can see X is this, um, Y is this, you know, and Z is this, and we close. So here, it means you know, we have three columns. Uh, we can see one, two, three, which is this. Um, we have one, two, five, which is one, two, five. Um, this one, Y, the column, HM, you know, this. So this give us, you know, um, but what about, you know, uh, if you have mistakes in this case, for example, you have, you know, only two entries. Yeah, we have three entries. Yeah, we have entry. Uh, so you can see it gives you an error. So to, you know, uh, you know, to solve this kind of error, to have something, you know, is yeah, an alternative version is trivial, trivial, not table. So trivial allows you just to specify this. So you have this at the columns. Um, you know, you have these X, Y, they know the column, and you specify the, you know, the column um, type H, M, M using comma, or like this one where you use, you know, um, you know, uh, you use, uh, um, you use this uh, vector. Here, you just specify them. Here, you just specify them. So it, here is very, you know, uh, easy to notice if you miss anything, right? So this is just um, basically this table and triple, they are just used to create a sample of data frame that if you want to, you know, um, you know, experiment something, but this is no usable in, you know, in production or in your, you know, data today, data um, analysis. It's just to, you know, experiment and to show some stuff. So this is one way to quickly create a data from using either table or triple. Um, triple is uh, more uh, better if you don't want to. Yeah. So that's basically, you know, the introduction of this chapter, data MPA. Um, more about this chapter will come in this section where we'll see um, different ways um, to read the data, uh, you know, including web scrapping. Cool. So that's what I get today. Um, anyone want to add something on top of this? Yeah, good. It was it was a good uh, presentation. Yeah, very good. I think uh, they they are, they are continuously uh, changing the book. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think even this the this the schedule has to be adjusted a bit because now yes. the chapter oh. seems to be more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will do that. Um, yeah. hopefully we um maybe you will also see that they will add something. Um, but. <laughs> because they actually work on it. Um, it just yesterday I was telling you that I just saw that they add this chapter. So and they yeah. added something um here in the chapter as well. So yeah. maybe add uh, something uh, you know. Um, but I think this book is a really good book that get people up to speed in data uh, analysis with R. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Ahmad? Yeah, yeah, very good, and it's yeah, that, very informational. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I think good. even the chapter eleven, the layers was not also there. Ah, eleven. Yeah, layers. Oh, I think. Yeah, yeah I, 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 think I'm seeing this now. Eleven. Oh, it's yeah. Is there? Oh, it's not there. Layers. Yeah. Oh, okay. You just see it now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe it, it was an oversight on my. I didn't. Notice no, I didn't that. even notice too. Um, I think you are right. It's not. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anyway. Hmm. Okay, we'll see the details. Um, you know, yeah. All right. Um, so that's what I got. Um, um, I haven't looked up. Um, you know, tidy Tuesday or something like that. But um, I will share if uh, anyone wants to now uh, something that we can work on. Anybody work on the previous one? Um, Ahmad, you were not here last week, right? Like the last. Yeah. Week. Yeah. I, I I missed that. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, the previous one I, I I checked it. Sorry. Yeah, I, the previous one I checked it. I think it was like two weeks back. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I did check it. It was quite interesting. Okay. Anyway, all right. Thank you. I will share something that uh, if we have time, we can work on it on this um, with days. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Ahmad. I will see you next week. Um, who yeah, is thanks. volunteering for the next chapter? Um, next chapter is workflow scripts and projects, chapter nine. Um, it's not that big chapter, it's small chapter as well. I'll check, I'll check if I, if, if okay. my, yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah. be able to work on it. Okay, all right. Thank okay. you all. See you okay. next week. Bye. Bye. Yeah, bye.